It's almost fall, which means it's time to switch out your home decor. So why not make a fall themed glass on glass mosaic vase? In today's video, I'll show you how to personalize the design for this project from simple to more complex. I'll also share the special grout I used to finish off this piece. Let's get to it. Welcome back. And if you're new here, my name is Julie. And on this channel, we talk about tips, tricks, tools, adhesives, materials, and specific mosaic projects. All to shorten your learning curve when it comes to creating mosaic art. So if that sounds like something you'd be interested in, please consider subscribing. As I mentioned in the intro, today's project is a glass on glass mosaic or GOG. So whenever you're online or you hear GOG associated with mosaics, it means glass on glass. So glass on glass mosaic includes projects where obviously the substrate is glass, but the tesserae could be items such as stained glass, glass beads, glass tile, Mille Fiori, Smalty, or as in today's project, vitreous glass tile. In particular, the three quarter inch size. So you could use any of these glass tesserae individually in your project, or you could combine them to create a mixed media glass on glass mosaic. Today's mosaic is a quick project and took just over a few hours to complete from tiling to grouting, not including the drying time. Now this mosaic vase actually started in a previous video here on the channel. And in that video, I talked about tesserae spacing and the various ways that you can measure your tesserae in order to keep consistent spacing as you're tiling. I'll include a link to the video down below in the description so you can check it out after you're done watching this one. Also keep in mind with glass on glass mosaic, there are a variety of adhesives you can use depending on the desired end result. So in other words, if you have transparent glass, you probably wouldn't want to use a dark gray cement based adhesive behind it. You'd want to use something that highlighted or brightened the glass you're using. Personally, with most of my glass on glass mosaics, I like to use a clear adhesive so that if someone should see the mosaic from behind, it would look similar to how it looks from the front, just personal preference. But again, if you're working with transparent glass, that actually may not be the look you're going for. Let me know down in the comments if you'd like me to do a video about adhesives for transparent glass. So in today's video, I'll show you how to tile a glass vase, whether you want to keep it simple or add a little design. And not only will I show you how to grout the vase, but we'll also talk about the particular kind of grout you need to use when working with glass on glass. We've got a lot to cover, so let's get started. Let's talk about the substrate and tesserae for this project. The substrate is a nice heavyweight square glass vase. It's the perfect size to anchor a coffee table grouping or for your fall or Thanksgiving tablescape. I'll include a list of some substrate options for you down below in the description. As I mentioned earlier, the tesserae are vitreous glass tile in the three quarter inch size. I gathered up some various fall inspired shades of red, yellow, and orange, and I also added in a caramel color. Vitreous glass tile are easy to cut and work with, and you'll see what I mean as we get into the project. I didn't tile all four sides of the vase the same. You'll see how flexible the vitreous tile are when it comes to leaving them uncut or cutting them down both ways make a great design statement. 
So I went through my stash of vitreous tile and pulled two shades of yellow, two shades of red, three shades of orange, and that caramel color I was talking about. And I set out a handful of each so I could start thinking about what I wanted to do design-wise. I'll include a list down below in the description for all of the substrates, materials, tools, all the other little goodies that I used in today's video in case you'd like to check them out. You can find this information down below if you click show more underneath the description and that's if you're watching this on your computer. Now if you're watching it on your phone or a tablet, you'll want to click the arrow that is to the right of the title of this video. Now that we've talked about the substrate and tesserae, we're ready to start tiling. Now the only prep work you need to do with a glass substrate is to make sure the tiling surface is clean. The adhesive for this project is Lexal. It's a clear silicone, so it's a little stinky. It's messy if you get it on your hands. It dries clear and it's also waterproof. But once dry, it's a great adhesive for glass on glass. As I mentioned earlier, this project started in another video where I shared the different ways you can achieve consistent tile spacing in your mosaic work. So I got started by laying out tiles on the vase substrate to get an idea of how many I could fit on each side. This also gave me an idea of how big the grout line would be. When creating a grid design like what I did on three sides of this vase, it's good to measure and establish a pattern. So if you aren't comfortable just yet with eyeing your tile spacing, you can always use something like a wood craft stick to make sure your grout line remains pretty consistent. Now over time, as you continue to make mosaics, you won't need a guide, but if you're just getting started, using something simple like a wood craft stick or coins are super helpful. And because not all of these tiles are perfectly three quarter inch square, there will be areas where the grout line isn't exactly the same width, but overall, in general, it'll look like it. Once I decided on the tile placement or the grid of the tesserae, I taped down a piece of wax paper to my work table. The reason for the wax paper is that I like to squeeze out Lexal onto it and butter the back of each piece of Tessera with the adhesive. This not only keeps the tip of my Lexal tube clear and clean, but also keeps air out of it so it won't dry up so fast. So I work with a small amount of the adhesive at a time, which also keeps the Lexal pretty smooth and really nice and easy to work with. So I got to work tiling, alternating between all of the colors making sure no two tiles of the same exact color were next to each other. And I used a wood craft stick to butter or apply the Lexal adhesive to the back of each tessera. Now, if you're using transparent or translucent stained glass, for example, in a project like this, you'll wanna make sure you apply adhesive to the entire back of each tessera. Otherwise, you'll risk having grout bleed and you don't want that. As you can imagine, once you've established how many tiles you can fit on your substrate while maintaining a grout width you're happy with, the tiling goes pretty quickly. So once I was done with the first side, I let it sit for an hour before I turned the vase to start tiling the second side. And then I started the tiling process all over again by squeezing out the Lexal onto the wax paper and continuing with the same grid pattern as I did on the first side. As you're tiling, if you don't wanna use a wood craft stick to keep your grout line consistent, you can always use a ruler to measure things as you tile. And then after I let the second side sit and dry for at least an hour, I turned it over to start tiling on the third side. It's important to note that these sides are not totally dry. 
So I still need to be careful as I'm turning the vase over. And I tiled the third side exactly the same as I did the first two. And you'll also want to go back and check the tiled sides to make sure nothing slid or got bumped. Now for the fourth side of the vase, I wanted to do something a little different with the tiling. So to get started, I cut out a piece of graph paper to the internal size of the fourth panel of the vase. And then I drew a loose design of what I wanted to tile. Now this is just a guide. I'm not going to keep strict to it. The reason I don't want to mark directly on the glass substrate with a permanent marker is because I don't want it to be seen from behind should someone be able to look down into the vase. This is especially important if you plan on using transparent or translucent glass. And then I taped the graph paper to the inside of the substrate. Next, I got to work cutting down the vitreous tile into quarters using my wheeled glass nippers. This is easy cutting work that goes pretty quickly. And then I got to work tiling my design. I started at the bottom of the vase by selecting a piece of tessera, marking it, and cutting. As I tiled, I didn't have to cut each piece of tessera. Some squares remain fully intact but some of the tessera needed to be cut as the design started to curve. And this cutting technique is called keystoning. This is when you cut square pieces of tessera to eliminate extra space in your grout line or a quote V in the grout line. In other words, it allows your grout line to remain at a consistent width as your tessera curves or turns. This allows the tesserae to create movement or flow visually. So the first line of tesserae that I'm working with is incorporating the three shades of orange vitreous. I'm alternating their pattern inconsistently just to add a little interest. I decided that before I adhered anything to the substrate, I wanted to cut the tesserae first and lay them out. Remember, I said my design on the graph paper was just a loose design and that I would actually finalize things as I started the tiling process. Once I was happy with the design, I squeezed out some Lexel and got to work with adhering everything down. I did this in a somewhat of a quick manner and then made minor adjustments with spacing. Next, I got to work tiling the other outside row of the design using the two shades of red vitreous. Again, some of the tessera were cut and some were keystoned as the pieces moved along the curve of the design. And just like with the orange tessera, I tiled the red in an inconsistent pattern just to add a little interest. And then I cleaned off any Lexel that had oozed out onto the glass substrate. So here's a tip. If you let the Lexel sit on your substrate for a few minutes, it's much easier to wipe away using a pointed toothpick. So now I can start tiling inside my design and I got to work with the caramel color vitreous. I followed the line of red vitreous and cut tiles as necessary. I made sure to keep my grout line consistent as I placed each piece of tessera all the way up to the top of the vase. Next, I got started tiling with the golden yellow vitreous. It hugged the line of vitreous of mixed oranges and I cut or keystone the tessera as needed all the way up to the top of the vase. And lastly, I finished tiling this design in the center with the bright, almost fluorescent yellow vitreous. 
Again, I cut or keystone the tessera as needed all the way up to the top of the vase. So every time I say all the way up to the top of the vase, you got to take a drink of whatever, whatever it is you're drinking. We're going to have a drinking game during this mosaic tutorial. Yeah. Now by this point, your fingers are probably very sticky. Maybe not, but if they are, I like to put a little olive oil, that's right, olive oil on a paper towel and wipe off my hands, including my fingernails, as well as the handles of whatever tools I'm using. So in the case of today's project, that's my tweezers and wheeled glass nippers. I don't want any of the sticky silicone still on them or me. I even make sure to clean under my fingernails. And then I follow it up by washing my hands with regular soap and water. And it usually takes a couple washings in order to get all of the olive oil off. I wanted to add an outline to the design, but I couldn't decide if I wanted to go with coppery brown metallic color tiles or go with plain brown vitreous tile. Ultimately, I decided to go with the coppery brown metallic vitreous. All of the vitreous are solid colors and I think the flecks of metallic copper will add a little extra something to the design. So I cut them down into thirds and loosely started placing them along the border of my design. I did need to keystone some pieces and I used a glass grinder on a few of the tesserae. And you could also use a sanding stone. And I'll include a link to that video down below in the description so you can check it out. I arranged the tesserae on the substrate and once I was happy with how they looked, I squeezed out more Lexal and got to work adhering them to the substrate. And the last step of tiling this project is finishing off the background design. And I'm going to keep to the same theme as the rest of the vase by using three quarter inch vitreous glass tile that's covering the other three sides. And I'll use the vitreous in the same grid pattern. So I removed the graph paper that was inside the vase and started adhering tesserae to the substrate surface. As you can see, some squares of vitreous didn't need to be cut and some did. So I measured, then marked with a permanent marker and cut the vitreous with wheeled glass nippers. Even though there was cutting involved with this grid pattern, it still went very quickly. It's important that even though I had to cut some tiles for the background, I wanted to keep the grout line in the grid pattern consistent with the rest of the vase. Once I was done tiling, I let the vase sit for at least 24 hours before I grout it. Those of you who have watched a number of videos here on my channel know that I like to keep some of these bigger scrap pieces for future mini mosaic projects. So before I clean off the glass shards on my work table, I like to go through the stack of cutoffs and put them with the others. Then my work table is ready to be cleaned off and set up for grouting. I'll include a list down below in the description for all of the materials, tools, adhesives, and extra little goodies that I used in today's video in case you'd like to check them out. The vase has been sitting here drying for at least five days, so the adhesive is fully dry and nothing's moving around. I love grouting glass on glass projects because the substrate allows for easy cleanup. However, glass substrates can also be a little tricky and I'll explain more about that in a minute. Now, as I mentioned in the intro, I'm going to use a special grout for this mosaic and that grout is thin set mortar. So if you're outside the United States, then you'll want to look for a cement based adhesive. 
So the reason I'm using thin set as the grout instead of using traditional grout is because I need to have an adhesive in the grout when the substrate is glass. If you only have plain grout that's not fortified, fortified meaning there are polymers added in, then you can add a latex additive to make it usable with a glass substrate. I've done a number of videos here on the channel all about how to mix up and use grout and thin set, whether you want to mix them up, you want to color them, tint them, are they fortified or not, the list goes on and on. I will include a link to the playlist down below in the description so you can check it out. So if you were going to grout a mosaic that's on a glass substrate using plain, non-fortified grout, then you'd risk the grout cracking and not sticking to the substrate. This is why you need an adhesive in your, quote, grout. The thin set will stick to the glass substrate. So I mixed up my gray thin set and I'm ready to get started with grouting. I should note that this face doesn't require any prep work so I can just get started. And I'll start by applying a small amount of thin set to the mosaic surface and I'll push it into the grout line in a clockwise counterclockwise motion. I'm moving the grout around, distributing it to all of the open areas. Once I'm done grouting the face of the first side, I'll make sure to run the grout along the top of the vase where the vitreous meets the vase substrate. I'll do the same for the bottom once I'm done grouting all four sides. So I'll continue on and I'll do this same process with each of the vase sides. And once all of the sides are grouted, I'll turn the vase over and run my finger with some thin set along the bottom of the vase where the vitreous meets the glass substrate. And now I'll let it sit here and dry for 10 minutes or so, and then I'll come back and clean it up. Okay, the vase has been sitting here for a few minutes, and now it's time to remove the excess grout. I'm using paper towels to clean up the mosaic, and I'll do it in the same exact way as I did putting on the grout, which is in a clockwise counterclockwise motion. I'm not pushing too hard, I'm just wiping away the excess grout. And I'm definitely not pushing hard over the grout line areas. And once I'm done with one side, I'll move on to the next doing the same exact process. And so on. Clockwise, counterclockwise. I'm not pushing too hard in the grout line. I'm just wiping off the excess grout that's on the surface of the vitreous glass tile. And once I'm done, I'll gently turn the vase over and run a paper towel along the bottom edge, also making sure there's no thin set stuck to the vase where I'm keeping it as clear glass. And I'll do the same thing to the inside of the vase. I'll take one last look at the vase to make sure I didn't miss cleaning off any spots. And there you have it, a gorgeous vase covered in simple materials that's ready for your fall-inspired coffee table. Whether you want to display the simple grid pattern or turn it to highlight your more intricate design. I'll include a list down below in the description for all of the substrate, materials, tools, adhesives, and extra goodies that I used in today's video in case you'd like to make a fall-themed vase of your own. Question of the day, let me know down in the comments if you make mosaic art for a specific holiday. So I'm looking for what holiday and what did you make? I would love to hear. Thank you so much for watching. Please give this video a thumbs up as it really does help my channel and subscribe if you haven't already. Click the bell notification so you never miss a single upload and let me know in the comments if there's something you'd like me to cover in a future video. I'll see you soon. Bye. We're good. Not including, oh, it's doing so good. Whoops, why can't I get this? Why can't I get this? This is a long video, y'all.
get yourselves buckled in because it's going to be a ride. The list of uh, all the things that I just said and wow, wow. Okay. All right. The video game session stayed quiet, so we are good. We are good. If you're looking for more mosaic inspiration, you can check out one of these two videos. Until then, see ya.